And then I do that little winding of the arm and off we go. Hello wrestling fans, my name is Kevin J. Callis. Yeah! And now that you've finished watching the Mr. McMahon Netflix documentary, what do you say we play a little wrestling Jeopardy? Hallelujah! Well then, let's go to the board now and check out the categories you'll be quizzed on in this episode, starting with Hell in a Cell. Followed by Tough Enough, the reality WWE TV show. Next up, we have Senior Citizens. And then we go back to the early 90s and Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And last but certainly not least, Inanimate Objects. So basically things that aren't really real, but actually have names. Make sense? I know, little Jimmy. But sometimes you just have to use your common sense. You know what I'm saying? And that sound means it's time to play the game. And we kick things off with the 200 point job around the easiest round in wrestling Jeopardy. You should go five for five here. And if you don't, can you really call yourself a wrestling fan? I'd say that's an accurate statement. And let's jump in and kick things off with Hell in a Cell, the 1998 Hell in a Cell match that took place at the King of the Ring between The Undertaker and this wrestler remains one of the most iconic matches of all time. And the correct answer here, who is Mankind, AKA Mick Foley? And we're on to Tough Enough for 200. Really, the most successful star who made it to WWE through Tough Enough is this two-time WWE Grand Slam champion. And that would be the most must-see WWE superstar, the awesome Mike The Miz Mizanin. This is the true story of when The Miz came to the Million Dollar Tough Enough Challenge! Moving on to Senior Citizens for 200. When this former NWA World Champion made his in-ring return at WrestleMania 25, it was like watching the clocks being turned back to his legendary feuds with the Macho Man Randy Savage and the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Although he was well into his 50s at the time, the dragon was still as fluid as ever. The correct answer here, who is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat? And that brings us to Smoky Mountain Wrestling for 200. Before joining the WWF as one of the body donnas in 1995, this WWE Hall of Famer began her career in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, managing Brian Lee and then boyfriend Chris Candido. First appearing on screen as Tammy Fitch, a heel manager who idolized Hillary Clinton. The correct answer, who is Sonny? You're all excited this week. Oh, I am so excited. And let's finish up the 200 point round with inanimate objects. What is the name of mankind's sock puppet shown here? Yes, you know him, you love him. Who is Mr. Socko? So how many questions did you get right there? One, two, five. Either way, it's all in good fun and that's exactly what this whole channel Wrestle Trivia is all about. So let's jump on back to the 400 point round and kick things off with another clue from Hell in a Cell. At the 2020 Hell in a Cell event, this wrestler won his 14th world title, tying the record of Triple H. And the answer, who is the Viper, Randy Orton? We're on to Tough Enough 4, 4. This wrestler made a controversial appearance in Season 3 when he beat up contestant Matt Capitelli during a training match, leaving him with a busted lip and a black eye.
Pretty much everybody has said after the fact that this was a huge dick move, and it really was by this guy, Hardcore Holly. Moving on to senior citizens for four. In many ways, this grandson of a plumber is the poster boy for someone having a great run in his 50s. They don't call him the natural for nothing. The correct answer, who is Dustin Rhodes? And that brings us to Smoky Mountain Wrestling for 400. Smoky Mountain Wrestling featured established talent like Tracy Smothers and the Rock and Roll Express, but also introduced fans to several future stars, particularly Chris Jericho and Lance Storm, who went by this tag team name. Now, I'd also give you extra credit if you knew that their entrance theme in Smoky Mountain was Rock America by the group Danger Danger. And that's because Jericho and Storm were called the Thrill Seekers. It's time for the Thrill Seekers to hit Tennessee and to go and show everybody that we're going to rock America. And let's finish up the 400 point round by having you name the Legion of Doom's ventriloquist dummy shown here. For some reason, the LOD's manager, Precious Paul Ellering, was walking through the mean streets of Chicago. What is this? Looking for a secret ingredient for the Legion of Doom success, and he stumbled upon it and found this guy, a puppet named Rocco. Let's bring him everywhere with us. All right, 10 questions down, 15 to go, plus the Daily Double and Final Jeopardy. Let's jump into the 600-point round with a clue from Hell in a Cell. In 2021, this wrestler became the first ever superstar to compete in two, two back-to-back -back Hell in a Cell matches in consecutive days. In a last chance Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Championship, Bobby Lashley defeated Drew McIntyre, and then the following night on Monday Night Raw, he defeated Xavier Woods. And that brings us to Tough Enough for 600. The first season used this wrestler as one of the trainers, so it made sense for the OG Tough Enough winner, Maven, to wrestle his first match against this former mentor. And the correct answer, who is Taz? Moving on to old fogies or senior citizens for 600. Since 2016, this wrestler has had a run as Universal Champion and mixed it up with Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, and Drew McIntyre. And that would be who is Goldberg? And we're on to Smoky Mountain Wrestling for 600. A little easy multiple choice for you here. Which one of these wrestlers had the longest reign as Smoky Mountain Wrestling Heavyweight Champion? A, Primetime Brian Lee, B, the Dirty White Boy, Tony Anthony, or C, the Wild-Eyed Southern Boy, Tracy Smothers? And coming in with a reign of 237 consecutive days, the correct answer here, who is the dirty white boy, Tony Anthony? And let's finish up the 600 point round by having you tell me the name of George the Animal Steel's stuffed animal shown here. And his answer, mine. No, not like that, just mine. Never mind. Mine? I said never mind, not my. never mind. Bye-bye! All right, uh, let's go to the 800-point round and kick things off with a clue from Hell in a Cell. <laughs> Thank God, the Daily Double coming in at a at a solid place right here. I needed a break after all that nonsense. The category here, hell in a cell. Think about that in your noodle and place your wager. 
Na 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 now. All right, time is up. Here's the clue. In October of 1983, these two Georgia wrestling stars went to war in a steel cage match that is credited as the inspiration for Hell in a Cell. Billed as the last battle of Atlanta, Wildfire, Tommy Rich, and the Mad Dog, Buzz Sawyer, settled their score once and for all inside the Omni in Atlanta, Georgia, and set the stage for the superstars of today and tomorrow. And we're on to Tough Enough for eight. Linda Miles, who was the co-winner of season two, worked under this ring name as the dominatrix manager of the Basham Brothers. and Linda was called Shaniqua. Moving on to senior citizens for eight. Typically, once you reach your late 50s, it behooves you to take it easy, and yet this French Frankenstein is still as crazy as ever. The answer, who is PCO? And let's jump back to at CM Chunk 9046's favorite category, Smoky Mountain Wrestling for 800. As documented in a 2001 episode of Vice TV's Dark Side of the Ring, wrestler Johnny K9 joined Smoky Mountain Wrestling in 1994 and became the territory's top heel under this moniker. And his name, who was Bruiser Bedlam. And let's finish up the 800 point round by going to inanimate objects and having you name Max Payne, or you could call him Man Mountain Rock's electric guitar, shown here. And that pretty little purple thing was called Norma Jean. Were you there? Did you see it? If you didn't, you missed it. Norma Jean and I were at Super Brawl. And we've reached the most difficult round of Wrestling Jeopardy, the thousand point round. Let's delve into things about the wrestling business that you may not know or even really care to know, but they're fun, useless facts. So here we go. Kicking things off with the thousand point clue from Hell in a Cell. During the main event Hell in a Cell match in 2019, Seth Rollins performed this number of curb stomps on the fiend's head. And here's a little trivia tidbit for you. Remember, in Blackjack, you always double down on 11, and Seth Rollins curb stomped the fiend's head 11 times. How the hell do you get DQ now? Yeah. Did he get DQ to the rest of the match? And that brings us to Tough Enough for a thousand. Josh Breedel, the winner of Tough Enough 2015, had this abominably bad nickname. After wrestling only six matches total for NXT, Josh and his nickname of the Yeti couldn't even touch the Yeti. And the Yeti! <laughs> Moving on to Senior Citizens for a thousand. This 78 year old became the oldest men's champion in WWE history in 2019. On a special Raw reunion, then 24-7 champion Drake Maverick tripped and fell running away from the boogeyman, allowing Pat Patterson to pin the diminutive Brit. Two, one, two, three. Oh. And we're on to the final clue from Smoky Mountain. Jim Cornette secured the financial backing necessary for his new pro wrestling venture in 1991 from this co-founder of Def Jam Records.
Rick Rubin was also a fan of the same kind of Southern wrestling that Cornette was into, which made him the perfect candidate to be Smoky Mountain's money man. And let's close out the board with the final clue from Inanimate Objects. When Perry Saturn filed a missing persons report for Moppy in 2001, he told detectives that this was the cleaning utensil's full name. Only mentioned once in like a split second during the August 9th, 2001 episode of SmackDown. The correct answer here, who is Moppy Q. McMopperson? Yeah. You called us all the way out here for a Moppy hop. Q. McMopperson, yes. Oh boy, I'm definitely gonna have to clean up the mess you made with that thousand point round, but you have the chance to redeem yourself and bet it all in Final Jeopardy. Let's find out what this episode's category is. Undefeated at WrestleMania. We'll think about that and place your wager now. All right, time is up. Here is the final Jeopardy clue. After The Undertaker's streak was broken, this high-flying superstar's record of 4-0 became the best at the event. Good luck. As of this recording, the wrestler with the most wins without a loss at WrestleMania is Rob Van Dam. And that does it for another episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. This was the 30th episode, so if you've been with us for all 30, thank you so much. If you haven't, make sure you click on the playlist and then just binge watch the heck out of all of these Wrestling Jeopardies because my name is Kevin J. Callis and I'll see you next time.